Electronic Media Production and Research Center of Madhya Pradesh Poch Open University presents its audio program Indian Conception of Culture Part 1 Friends in the eminent scholars lecture series today we are going to present the lecture of a great scholar of our country professor 3 bikram pati he was former vice chancellor of Allahabad university and shri jagannath sanskrit vishwavidyalay puri today we are going to present first part of his lecture on the topic indian conception of culture Indian culture has two aspects, one is Indian and the other culture. And let me tell you that there is something deeper in it and that is the Indian conception of culture. So Indian culture is Indian culture in the sense of culture as interpreted by the great sages, the great saints and savants of India. So it is not just Indian culture in the sense in which different national cultures are taken to be interpreted all over the world, like British culture, American culture and so on. It's not a routine theme. This theme is very deep. It is Indian culture from the standpoint of the definition of culture as understood by our great personalities of the past, the great sages who had clairvoyance, who could look into the future, who could predict the future, who had made predictions which have come true, literally word for word. It is the concept of culture which they have developed, not we of modern time. But those great saints, it is that conception of culture which I'll be talking about and I'll be talking about our culture from that standpoint. So to start with, we should know what our conception of culture is. What is it that India treats as culture? This word Sanskriti is a rather modern word. This word does not occur in our classical literature. Sanskrita occurs, Sanskara occurs, but not Sanskriti. So the translation of culture as Sanskriti should be carefully understood. This Sanskriti is based upon sanskara and it is not some kind of development of the fine arts or crafts or modes of conventional behavior or traditions as for example sometimes the western usage of the word culture takes within its ambit the tribal culture. We say that there are certain characteristics of tribal culture. We similarly talk about the culture of the Middle East. That is the conventions, the traditions, the symbols and shibboleths, the costumes and customs, all these 
taken as a whole give a picture of culture but there is another rather humorous understanding of the term culture and i'll tell you a story there was a friend of mine who had become a big officer in the government of india and on one occasion he went to bombay and wanted to put up with a friend of his who was a big businessman when he reached his friend's house he found that his friend was missing he was not there in the house but his friend's wife was there so he was a little worried as to whether he should remain in the house or should go to some other place but the lady of the house was a cultured person and appropriately received him her husband's friend and gave him the usual benefits of being a guest at a gentleman's house she played the hostess and she could not definitely say when her husband would come back it was evening and my friend waited there and waited and waited up to 9 pm and then he thought that probably it would be dinner time and his friend would come back and they would dine together and he asked whether his friend was coming within an hour or so because he was still in a divided mind as to whether to linger on especially when the husband was absent to stay with the lady of the house in the late hours of the evening he was a discreet person so he waited it was 10 o'clock then his friend's wife said bhai sahab aap pareshan mat hoiye wo aate rahenge aap khana wana kha lijiye then he said how can that be we are close friends from our good old alabad days i have to wait until he come and he waited and waited and at 1 am there was a knock at the door and the great businessman entered and when he saw his old friend the senior government officer there he said aap aur mujhe khabar nahi ki aap aane wale to aap aane wale hain iski khabar hoti to main to kabhi bahar nahi jata main to aapke liye intezar karta rehta then my friend asked ki aap gaye kahan the to unhone kaha re yaar एक कल्चरल फंक्शन में चला गया था तो द मीनिंग ऑफ ए कल्चरल फंक्शन इज डूबियस इन द कॉमन पार्लेंस व्हाट इज ए कल्चरल फंक्शन इट मे बी एनीथिंग एंड एवरीथिंग तो आई लीव इट टू योर इमेजिनेशन व्हाट टाइप ऑफ ए कल्चरल फंक्शन ही हैड अटेंडेड एंड व्हाई ही वाज कमिंग बैक सो लेट almost in the small hours of the morning but culture is a deeper concept and intrinsically it means refinement it means cultivation cultivation for the purpose of refinement but what kind of refinement is it according to our traditions that is the traditions of the great indian philosophers social thinkers the meaning of culture is refinement of the personality from the point of view of the highest good of mankind it is not only the refinement of one aspect of the personality it is an integrated refinement of personality and not also an aimless integration of the personality 
the refinement that would be expected to be created in an individual should be for the uplift of mankind for nishreya sir for the highest good of mankind and that highest good is moksha that is freedom freedom from bondage freedom from the strappings of worldly pleasures which are of a lower order pleasures of a lower order it is freedom from the lesser delights it is a kind of freedom which lifts up the spirit of man that ascends to the higher planes of self realization and this self realization is realized only through a complete annihilation of the self when the individual becomes unselfish to such an extent that he is one with the common man the man on the street the suffering and the lowly as much as he is one with the well placed those who have the preferments of life the means of happiness in the classical and routine sense when he is one with the whole of mankind it is only then that he attains self realization in other words self realization is the realization of the higher self which is the same in all of us the individual self the jivatma is transcended uske pare परमात्मा के स्तर पर हमें जाना है बट हाउ कैन दैट हैपन द बृहदारण्य को उपनिषद पुट्स इट वेरी ब्यूटिफुली आत्मा व अरे द्रष्टव्य श्रोतव्य मंतव्य निधिध्यासितव्य द आत्मन विच इज द हाइएस्ट सेल्फ not the individual self not the self which is involved in routine activities with limitations and boundaries with circumscribed conditions of work and living but the higher self the atman that is drashtavya shotavya that must be understood through observation through seeing and through hearing about it but the atman cannot be understood that way it is understanding at a higher level it is intuitive understanding mantavya the manana that takes place is reflection it is reflection cogitation meditation manana which is the source of the highest intuition and that intuitive realization leads to a kind of resolution of the personality the individual then does not break the individual is not killed but the individual is assimilated in the highest self the paramatma the jivatma is not killed it is not thrown away there is nothing wrong in it it is absolutely fundamental but it becomes absorbed in the paramatma in the paramatma in the higher self so the individual self is important each individual citizen as an individual is important but there is the higher self to which that individual self inheres and belongs in a very intuitive manner the individual when he becomes aware that he is one among millions and millions of jivatmas which are all manifestations of the paramatma becomes one with the paramatma but that is not enough intuitively one might go to that 
high elevated stage of self realization but thereafter it may be that loss of memory it may be loss of intuition may take place then the individual after a moment's realization that the individual is not just to live for himself or for herself but he is one with the entire universe so to say not only mankind but the entire living universe and even more the entire universe is one with the entire universe he is in harmony with the entire universe after that realization it may be that again one is punar mushiko bhava one again comes back and becomes once again involved in petty affairs which are involved in selfishness which are generative of selfishness it is possible that a person after a moment's realization that he is an indian and he must be an indian true and true next moment becomes a casteist it is possible so the saint the great yajna valke said mantavya shrotavya mantavya nididhyasitavya the last expression is the most powerful nididhyasitavya that means that moment realization must be a continuous properly stretched out realization in other words in every walk of life in day to day working in the experiences of our mundane world we have to bring that realization to bear upon our activities in other words we have to carry that realization to day to day life that is nidhi dhyasita so the atman according to us is infinite undying immortal perennial and it is therefore called paramatma it is all embracing the jivatma is one with the paramatma if only appropriate self realization takes place and thereafter the jivatma has to continue in the state of self realization and it is only then that a person becomes cultured so in the indian traditional meaning of the word culture there is deep philosophy but now it is people talk about tribal culture now in tribal culture there is no such connotation it has nothing to do with that fundamental philosophical approach which our ancient seers had adopted but that does not mean that i am against tribal culture let me tell you that the tribal culture is the body of customs conventions traditions of the tribal people which are artistic in their own way which are very elevating to them in their own way and to the extent to which they are in consonance with good life with the universal principles of good life those aspects of tribal culture must be welcome and will become in a way part and parcel of the higher culture which we conceive of that will be one facet of the fundamental culture of which there will be multifarious facets facets multifarious aspects just as for a diamond there are different faces and if you have a flat diamond it is not really worthy of any attention so culture in its essence is fundamentally a philosophical term and the usage of the term culture in our english parlance is somewhat of an earth earthy type it is somewhat common place our conception of sanskriti therefore is the conception of that kind of refinement which makes a person elevated to the highest extent and prepared for the attainment of a complete self realization 
so that he becomes one with the entire universe, not only one with the other members of a given society, but one with the whole of this universe. There is therefore a kind of symphony, a kind of orchestration in this conception of culture. And you will find that the Indian saints and seers were great philosophers. They conceived of the highest goal of life as freedom, freedom from bondage, freedom from selfishness. And therefore, you may say that our culture is philosophical. Our culture is intrinsically philosophical. But there is a kind of philosophy which can be dangerous. There was a definition of a philosopher as a blind man who searches in a dark night for a black cat which is not there. The cat is also not there. That is a philosopher. And there are some very humorous definitions of a philosopher. But this is good enough for the present. But it is not that kind of philosophy that is at the bottom of our conception of culture. It is the philosophy of positive attitude towards life. It is the philosophy of an integrated personality. So we had Purusharthas as our conception of the foundations of culture. Purusharthas are four in number. They are the fundamental values of life. And they are called Purushartha, not because they are meant for Purushas and they are not meant for Naris. That is not the meaning of Purusha. Purusha, the word Purusha here means the higher personality of man, the elevated personality of man and woman, both. So it is in that sense that Purushartha should be interpreted. The first is Dharma, the second is Artha, the third is Kama, and the fourth is Moksha. Moksha, I have already mentioned, is the ultimate summum bonum of life, that is the highest goal, the aim to be achieved. That is moksha, freedom. But it can be achieved only when we have a desire to achieve it. That desire is kama. That is kamana, vasana. If we have no desire, we become like the earthworm burrowing into the earth, have no personality. But man is very different from the lower animals. And man therefore has desires not like beasts for commonplace pleasures, but the higher pleasures of life, he desires of a higher kind, desire for higher pleasures, so those are higher desires. So karma here does not mean just sex, but sex is not ruled out as well, because it is a process. It is a natural process. It is a natural phenomenon, a natural principle, which cannot be done away with for the sake of procreation, for the sake of the development of the society. Sex is essential, but it is not debased sex. It is not sex which demoralizes a man, but it is sex which gives man partnership with his fellow traveler in life, his sadharmini. It is therefore an elevated conception. And then again, karma means desires of such a nature that dharma is always kept in the background of mind. Dharma virodho bhuteshu kamoshmi bharatar shabha Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, if there is desire in various creatures of this world which are in conformity with 
in consonance with and in harmony with dharma then i am the personification of such desire krishna himself says that he is kama and what kind of kama what kind of desire that kind of desire those kinds of desire which are in consonance with in agreement with dharma but remember one thing that in the purushartha categorization in the purushartha hierarchy kama comes first it is not dharma which comes first kama is fundamental without vasana without trishna there is no life life is will and will is desire and this desire after much experience has been found to be source of disaster if there is no background of dharma if desire is absolutely wanton reckless and if desire leads to license then it is not true freedom it is not liberty but it is license then it can lead to disaster great civilizations have been completely wiped off because they were slaves of such desires as did not conform with dharma so this dharma comes afterwards but now dharma has been more or less well understood and established You are listening to an audio program, Indian Conception of Culture, Part One. Subject expert was Professor Tri Bikrampati, Sound Editor Piyush Kamble, Anchor Danish Usma Qureshi. program was directed and recorded by Amar Bahadur Yadav and produced by Electronic Media Production and Research Center of Madhya Pradesh Poch Open University